13 minutes to go and young Kevin Campbell celebrates in the week in which he's just signed a new three-year contract to stay with Arsenal with a goal that's finally broken the deadlock. Yes, it's, a, it, it's, it's good play by Alan Smith, actually. He does very well. Knocks in a lovely ball. And that's a well-taken goal by Campbell. Kevin oh. Campbell gets his fourth goal of the season, his third in the last... Kevin Campbell gets his second goal of the game, and I wonder if he's going to get a bottle of Barclays bubbly to go with it. He's got every chance, hasn't he? <laughs> good, persistent yeah, play here. It, it was. Another good flick on by Alan Smith. He, he keeps getting his head to these things. And uh, a little bit fortunate. But if you don't get in those positions, as we always say, you don't get. And he's got in the position, and it's there. It was a messy sort of goal that in a way sums up this match, but it's in the back of the net, and with five minutes to go, or even less, it surely has clinched Arsenal's victory and returned to the first division leadership. Two goals. Somehow you couldn't see Liverpool losing this and winning the championship. The Anfield faithful must have felt decidedly edgy then after 20 minutes when Sunderland's rush hit the bar, Armstrong hit rush, and then finally hit the net. There was a very familiar ring to Liverpool's equaliser, Beardsley, to Barnes, to the one and only rush, and his first in the league since New Year's Day. There was also a familiar look about the build-up as Liverpool took the lead just before half-time. Pass and move has always been their method. Speedy to Beardsley, whose shot may or may not have nicked in off the post had Gary Hours not blasted as in first. Just like Leeds, the last thing Palace want is an Arsenal League and Cup double, otherwise their European hopes will be scuppered. Wright tangling with Wright, but who was in the wrong? The referee fought Mark for the challenge as opposed to Ian for the handball. Andy Gray's penalty converted Franny Lee style, as Peter Shilton will no doubt remember. Palace have been finding the going a bit rough of late, but nowhere near as rough as Derby. The old 1-2 combination of Bright and Wright putting the game beyond the bottom club. Derby's bid to survive and avoid their latest defeat came with six minutes left, Gary Micklewhite going solo, but with only three points out of the last 33, Derby appear to be going only one way, and that's down. Sheffield United, for so long relegation certainties, could well finish the season above halfway. Their seventh successive win taking them eight points clear of the bottom two. Defending away from home, not exactly Chelsea's strong suit. Ian Bryson saying thanks very much, his third in as many games and his second successive 1-0 winner. This was the combination that made mincemeat of Inter Milan and it's the best Villa have played since then. Cowens to Platt, brilliantly conceived, superbly executed, goal of the day contender A. Now what a time to return to form and fitness for Platt with Villa struggling and England on the verge of their most important international since the World Cup. Cowan staking his claim for another outing against the Irish involved in all three and picking out Platt more reliably than Radar. Platt's hat-trick just after half-time followed Cowan's corner. As the ball is headed back in, Platt is level with play, by which time the Spurs' defence were committed to coming out. Platt made the rest look easy, the sign of a very special player. Now, with all the distractions going on behind the scenes at Spurs, concentration was a long time coming. They got one back through Gaza's replacement for the next few weeks at least, Vinny Samways. And with seven minutes left, Villa's recent anxieties returned when Spurs closed the gap even further. Paul Allen made it 3-2, but the next few days absolutely vital to the club's immediate and long-term future. Same old story at the Dell, Southampton are always liable to concede more than they score. The reliable Dave Watson getting his fourth in five games. Six minutes later, Southampton were level. Neil Ruddock, who must have thought he was totally out of luck moments earlier when Neville Southall smothered a shot that ricocheted off both posts, fired in from Rod Wallace's layoff, and that's one of our goal of the day contenders. Everton again, and a first for Mike Milligan. Tim Flowers hurtled off his line, caught Milligan a nasty blow, but not before the ball was on its way home. Everton up at the break. Southampton equalising with a prime contender for own goal of the day. Mike Newell. 
but Newell was all smiles ten minutes later. McCaw hit a powerful drive. Flowers got in the way, but that's about all, and Newell cashed in. Space, time, possibility of offside were all factors in Tony Cotty's 16th of the season. Four in the league and three of those against Southampton. That was the 54th goal the Saints have conceded in the league this season. And that's the reason they're now the most vulnerable if either Sunderland or Derby finish the season in a Houdini-inspired way. Alan Shearer nicked another with eight minutes left, but Everton held out. Two goals in less than a minute just before half-time. Wimbledon, who were unbeaten in the league this year, struck first with John Fashion, who's 15th of the season. All of them in the league. Bad vibe for City, who'd lost four of the previous five. But straight from the kickoff, City pressed forward. Laurie Sanchez handling. But was it ball to hand or hand to ball? The referee went for the former. Mark Ward with his seventh penalty of the season and Wimbledon's 11th single pointer of the season. They're top of the score draw league. Two goals at the City ground and two goal of the day contenders. Brian Robson spotting Clayton Blackmore's run. Blackmore committing Crossley with one subtle movement and scoring with the next. Seven weeks since United's last win in the league. Eight in Forrest's case, a draw then hardly surprising. A brilliant strike by Terry Wilson just after half-time, and United will be hoping for no repeats in Montpellier on Tuesday night. Brian Gunn, the Norwich goalkeeper, the man of this match, but in one fluent example of how to play on the Kenilworth Road plastic carpet, Norwich won it. Precision move from start to finish, Tim Sherwood with the scorer, and doing nothing to dispel any lingering fears about Luton's senior status for next season. The man shooting QPR to safety is Les Ferdinand. Ray Wilkins' free kick. Glance down, bouncing up and just beyond the Grizovic. Ferdinand sixth in the last five games. QPR sixth without defeat. 